I want to share one of the worst software habits I've ever had. I used to pop up tabs constantly when I was browsing the web. If a window got too many tabs, I'd make a new window and then I'd fill up that one too. Week after week, I'd do this. I could end up with dozens and dozens of open tabs. Eventually, the browser would get so slow that I'd quit using that browser and switch to a different browser. So I'd fill up Safari, ditch it, fill up Chrome, ditch it, fill up Firefox, ditch it, fill up Brave. I think you know where I'm going. Then when I've got no browsers left, I'd go back to Safari where I just close all those precious tabs and forget about all of them. Now, hopefully you're not that bad, but safe to say, a lot of us are neck deep in tabs and tabs are being used in a way that I'm sure nobody ever intended them to be. In this video, I'm going to talk about the tab problem, the tab solution, and how the web browser can be a better workspace and place to think. Hi, I'm Nick Milo, and I'm here to help you do your best thinking and most inspired work more often. Let's take a moment to understand tabs a bit. Tabs were not designed to be a way to manage information. They were just a simple way to flip between a few pages. But browsers have become information management systems. For most of us, they're the main way we access information. And the thing is, they are bad information management systems. And one of the chief reasons they are so bad is you guessed it, tabs. I mean, how many tabs do you have open right now? Go look, post your number down in the comments below. Actually, I asked the community this and about half of you, 44% had more than 13 tabs open. Another 21% of you had six to 12 open, which is still quite a lot. Tabs are essentially a pile of pages. Your browser is a workspace. We do a lot of thinking here. So your workspace becomes the equivalent of a desk with piles of stuff on it. Plenty of brilliant people work this way. So, you know, don't beat yourself up over this too much if this is how you work. But I think tabs make us feel confused, overwhelmed, and a little disheartened sometimes because you end up playing this information management game that you are just slowly and inevitably losing. So the tab problem is this. Browsers are bad information management systems. And the main reason they're so bad are tabs. So if that's the problem, what's the solution? I think the best solution is a new tool, a browser that is designed as an information management system as a workspace. And that browser exists and it's called Arc. Now Arc is Mac only right now, but a Windows version is coming soon. It is an invite only beta. So you need to join the waitlist or get an invite from someone already using it. Arc is a Chromium based browser. So under the hood, it's all Google Chrome, meaning that your extensions, if you use any, they're all going to work. Arc's big idea is that it merges tabs with bookmarks and then orders them in a cohesive way and it does some cleanup for you. I'll explain all that shortly. It's a unique interface and it may cause you a bit of frustration because we're so used to the old way, the tab way. But I'm hoping this video will lessen that frustration and I assure you that the minor learning curve is well worth it. So how does Arc work? Tabs are gone from the top and they now live along the side. This is surprisingly great because managing pages vertically is just simply better than managing them horizontally. You can see all the text for starters, or at least enough of it, and it's quicker and easier to drag stuff up and down than it is side to side. Now think about it. You can put pages in folders and open or close them as you see fit. You can select several pages at once and close them. Basically, the way that you manage files already on your computer you can now do that with your browser tabs. It's like, finally. In Arc, there are three types of tabs. Let's talk this through because it might sound kind of weird, but it's pretty simple. You can make these buttons at the top for your priority sites. These are called favorites. Lots of people will want their email there or Slack or their calendar or Spotify. These buttons are actually like bookmarks and tabs at the same time. Whoa. These stay here until you remove them. So if you close one of these tabs by hitting Command W, you've closed the window, but the button stays put because it's also a bookmark. In order to remove it, you have to right click it and archive it. If this seems confusing or odd, once you understand how this interface works overall, it will make sense. This middle section, these are called pinned tabs, and they are similar to the favorite buttons with one difference I'll get to shortly. And then in this bottom section, these are the old fashioned tabs we love and hate. When you make a new tab, it appears down here and they close like normal tabs. And ladies and gentlemen, here's the twist. These tabs auto close after a certain amount of time. The default is 12 hours, which I find a bit short. 
I set it to 24 hours and I'm happy with that. You can make it a week or even a month. You'll be surprised at how infrequently you notice these tabs auto closing. So the Arc browser does some cleanup for you and protects you from yourself. And if you want to pin one of these tabs, just drag it up here. Want it to be a button? Yep, drag it up here. And closed tabs are all still readily accessible in your archive, which is very similar to history. You can reopen by hitting Command T, which is the shortcut for a new tab. So if you think, oh, where did that Wikipedia page go? Command T, type some bit of the name and boom, it reopens. Now it seems kind of trivial to call this the archive, but that's actually an interesting conceptual shift. All the pages that come through your browser become part of your archive. Your browsing becomes a searchable index, your own little library. Now I suspect this feature isn't quite fully cooked yet, but I think the archive feature is quite promising. And you can switch among open tabs with control tab, similar to switching among apps. This actually looks a lot like the Windows app switcher. You should try it out now. Good start, right? Arc makes tabs easier to manage. It cleans up some of your messes and it gives you a good way to access those old closed tabs. But you might be thinking, not a lot of space over here, right? Seems like this sidebar will get crowded and confusing. Well, actually no, because you have as many bars as you need. Arc has spaces. If you swipe left or right with a trackpad or hold shift and scroll with the mouse wheel, you can flip between these spaces. And those favorite buttons at the top, they persist across all spaces. You can always get to those, but the rest of the buttons only appear in the space you put them in. So you can have a workspace with Slack and Gmail and Figma, and you can have a play space with YouTube and Discord and Twitter. Just hit this plus button and make a new space, and you can name them, give them an icon, give them a color, and check out this detailing. You can even add noise to the color to give it some cool texture. This program is filled with these delightful little details like this. These developers really put a lot of love into this program. Now to rearrange spaces, by the way, you can just click and drag the icons. Also, it's quick and easy to hide this sidebar. You hit Command S, which is save historically, but we mostly don't need to do that in web browsers, so it's really an underused hotkey. So the S stands for sidebar, and it's very easy to get to this with your hand, then you are in this full screen immersive environment. This just feels better than having all that browser UI junk around you. It's so much nicer for focused work. If you need to work in Figma for a bit, let's say, you can just hide everything else and just concentrate on that, just like you're in a dedicated desktop app. This sidebar, it's basically the interface. Everything is here. What these features thus far do is this. They let you spatially arrange the pages in your workspace, and you can hide the stuff that you don't need right now. It is clunky or impossible to do this with traditional browser tabs. Those are the fundamentals of the Arc browser. Arc takes those windows that were floating around in the tab bar and in different windows and in your bookmark bar and your history, and it puts them into an ordered, and cohesive space. Just this alone is an upgrade from the other browsers, but Arc is way better than this. Around these big core features, they somehow have added lots of smaller and equally great features. Arc is exceptional for focused work because it reduces clutter and it has this great full screen mode. But sometimes we're multitasking. Sometimes we're doing light work and we want to watch Netflix at the same time. So it's equally great for all those multitasking activities. Another cool feature that I use numerous times per day is picture in picture. So if you're watching a video and you switch to a different page, you get this awesome pop-up video player. I've been really surprised at how much I love this, how seamlessly it works. It's great for work, like watching a tutorial while you want to work on the application you're in at the same time. And it's great for play. Sometimes I'll have a TV show running here while I'm doing some cleanup stuff on the computer. Equally nice, Spotify controls will stay over here in your sidebar. It's these little touches that make this browser into something truly, truly special. Arc has another amazing and yet simple thing that no other popular browser has, split views. I'm on YouTube and I want to sort email at the same time, I can just open a split view and I've got them both. Another thing that helps prevent tab hoarding is a feature called Little Arc. 
Hit Command Option N anywhere, start typing a site name, and boom, you get this mini browser with almost no UI. If I want to check a movie time, let's say, I can just pop up a little arc, I can take a look, I can close it, done. It's a simple way to keep unimportant tabs from getting mixed up with all the important ones. Here's another brand new feature they just added right now, Peek. If you click a link to another site, you get this pop-up preview. You click away and it's gone. So great. We are entering the home stretch, friends. Just a quick mention of some other notable features. Firstly, for Obsidian users, here's a fantastic one. Hit Command Option Shift C and you get a markdown link. You get the page title with a link. I use this all the time. It's incredibly handy. And you can also hit Command Shift C to just get the URL. Also, over here on the left is something called the library, which has screenshots, even your desktop and also your downloads. The most notable feature, however, is called easel, which lets you grab screenshots and type text and draw lines and arrows. It's kind of like Canvas in Obsidian. I've not gotten into using this, but something I really like here is that it maintains links to where everything came from. So when you take a screenshot, you can easily get back to the original source. That's, whoa, that's really amazing. And screenshots, they're awesome in Arc. Look at how your cursor snaps to regions, and then you choose what you want to do with the capture. There it is. The best solution to the tab problem is the Arc browser. I strongly recommend checking it out. It rethinks how we interact with the internet and with information. And it's a really nice complement, and it's a part of your personal knowledge management system because it creates a new information realm where most everything you've encountered can be found in a way that feels rather orderly. It's different. It takes some getting used to, but I think it's clearly better once you do get used to it. It's now my daily personal browser. It's hugely impressive, and yes, it's still in beta somehow. Even if you never try Arc Browser, I think one day in the future, you'll be using some of these features in whatever browser you're using, because I suspect the big boys will be stealing them. They're just too good. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again, and until then, stay connected.